I just can't compare to, you know, his girlfriend from the <laughs> from the homeless shelter. <laughs> that sounds so bad. She just worked there. No. <laughs> I don't know she if just we worked want to there. keep that part, but <laughs> My name is Lila Roop, and this is my friend, Caitlin Klepek. We're just two gals having a good time, wanting to talk, make a podcast, but we're not like your average podcasters because we went to school for media. Yeah, we're just gals with degrees doing talking and stuff. Yeah, doing doing all the talking and chatting and gossiping you'll ever want to hear, honestly. And we are the Baggage Claim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> Baggage claim, baby. <laughs> we were starting with the story of how we met. Okay, so I remember, like, in that class, nobody ever, like, spoke. Like, nobody ever, like, was raising their hands to answer questions. And I feel like we were some of the only two people that did. And then when we like got interviewed by each other, I was like, that's like not typical for me. Like I usually don't really talk during class and you're like me neither. But the class was just so like, like everyone was so boring in that class. Like I don't think anyone had like a personality at all that we were like the only two people that would ever speak. Yeah, like we're both not super loud in normal classes, but everyone else was so weird and awkward we were like, maybe I should talk. Like we had to. We were like forced to in that situation. So you were also sitting in the front row. So Julian would always like ask you questions. Yeah, he he loved me. I think we were some of his star students. <laughs> we were like the only ones that spoke. So we were like the only ones he could choose from. But yeah, like I didn't really plan on talking much in that class or like getting to know anyone and then julian put us in that discussion group with we'll, we'll call him won't, <laughs> <laughs> won't. yeah and me you going crazy yeah <laughs> me you and won't had to talk about like social media in our lives and all won't talks about is being from rural Colorado and guns. I was yeah and guns <laughs> I was like this conversation is not going to go well because I don't think he's heard of social media like I don't even think they've gotten it out there yet I'm like I'm like 90 percent sure that he said he wasn't on social media at the time like I'm like 90 percent sure he said something about that which is really just strange considering like our ages and you know growing up in this generation being a college student like who doesn't have social media and I also remember just like he talked about like one of three things. It was like being from rural Colorado, politics, or like gun rights. And that's like which all, are all related. Yeah, which are all related. <laughs> and he would just do so while like heavy mouth breathing with like <laughs> it's like <sighs> I knew won't before that class. Because we were in an Islamic art and mysticism class. Because Will is, is so that? into that. And that's that's real big in rural Colorado. You didn't know. They love Islamic <laughs> yeah. art and mysticism. So <laughs> he would come in. And the biggest thing I remember about him is that he'd always come in in a Rick and Morty shirt, which is like super yeah. on brand. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And he would volunteer to... Uh, answer questions and he'd always be wrong and I love his confidence because if I answered wrong once I would be like I'm dropping out of DU I'm never going to school again like um, goodbye I think it's probably like a trait of you know a boy a young lad raised in rural Colorado <laughs> yeah. guns, just like and like the thing is we need to talk a little more about won't and kind of like our 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 lore to him. I think that that's something we need to talk about. Like just our the lore, the like his his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the won't lore. 
<laughs> the won't lore. He comes from so far out in rural Colorado that he just grows wheat out of his head <laughs> and he never cuts it or washes it. They and it looks they don't have shampoo out there. That's... They don't. They haven't invented it yet. Yeah. It's or social media. He does have he does have lip filler, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he got it. He took a vacation to LA or something and he came back. He they brought it back to his people. Just drink so much. They always have shot glasses on them like, at all times. <laughs> so he just is constantly doing like the Kylie Jenner lip challenge. <laughs> yeah. They also were always like wildly chapped. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were just like absolutely <laughs> destroyed at all times. And I'm like, I don't even know how your lips would like get to that point. And like, I just also like, you know, people like get chap lips if they're like making out with people a bunch. This man, he's never seen a woman, I don't think, ever in his life. They don't have them in rural Colorado. <laughs> they don't have them. <laughs> I would like to set him up with someone. I think they need to like invent a new girl that <laughs> will want that. Like, maybe he was just like hatched out of a gun when he was born. So he doesn't know how these things work. <laughs> maybe we can train him. Maybe we can try. You know, I think Although, I, I don't I don't we, know if we'd have the access to do that, considering what we've done. <laughs> we've both followed him on Instagram or tried to because he's private. He did not follow us back. At some point, I pulled what I did to Juju. I unfollowed him. I followed him again. He watched my story. So he obviously looked at it and looked at my account. And decided, nope. Nope, not her. <laughs> he also, I feel like he had like a very few amount of people he followed or like followers. It was like 20. Like barely any, probably the population of rural Colorado. Um, yeah. <laughs> he only accepts people from his village. <laughs> village. Yeah. But I remember, like, we were hanging out. We got, we, like, dinner together one night or something. And, you know, won't came up in conversation as he always would. Because he's just, he's just a goofy, silly guy. You know, it's, like, hard not to, not to talk about him. <laughs> There's no other way you can describe him other than using, like, the weed emoji with, like, the lips and, like, the singular eyeballs. And that would be him. That looks exactly like him. Like, it I couldn't does. even, if I showed you a picture up against those emojis the emojis would look more like him you would be like spot the difference and nobody would know like you wouldn't be able to do do it so we were talking about him and we we got this idea and it was like pretty late I feel like because like we had gotten dinner late and then we were like talking in my car late and we were like what if we just like request him again like together at the same time we like counted down like three two one and did it we're like giggling <laughs> and it's mostly we seem like absolute psychopaths <laughs> like imagine getting a follow request from two people you know that are friends at the exact same time i also i'm checking again he has 73 followers what Is and we're not, not either one of them wow. and he has zero posts he's literally gatekeeping us <laughs> from looking <laughs> <Nothing>. at <laughs> <laughs> Like, we're so low to him, we can't even look at nothing. no we posts yet. Yeah, maybe he has, like, a singular tagged photo, and we just... What is it, like a nude? Yes. Like, why is he <laughs> <laughs> Why is he gatekeeping it? Why is he so private? It's like, I, I would think in my head that he would be, like, so excited about us requesting him. Yeah. I think we actually set him into like a spiraling panic attack by doing that. Like, I think that he, that probably, he probably thinks we're bullying no. him and like he's like 10% right. I'm, like, <laughs> I was gonna say he's, he's kind of right if that's the case because I feel like we would also like walk together on campus. Like, Lila and I would get like lunch together in the dining hall or like whatever. We would just like mess around and sometimes we would see him and we would just like point and laugh at him or like. <laughs> Yeah, we like throw things at him. <laughs> we just kept tomatoes like on hand, like in case we saw him on campus. No, but like even like if I would see him individually, and I know like you did the same, I had to text you. 
like as soon as I saw him I had to text you and be like oh my gosh guess who I just saw and he would just send back like the we emoji (laughs) and like and then we it kind of became a thing with multiple people we had like emojis associated with like different people we knew from school I just remember like feeling like this kid is so weird like am I the only one that thinks this kid is so weird and just like the side eyes going crazy because I kept like looking over at you. And I think we had this little like moment where we bonded and we we're like, OK, she's cool. Like it was already that look that you give your best friend when something weird happens. We were like, what the fuck is going on right now? But we weren't even friends. He's just <laughs> so weird that it pushed us into becoming friends. Yeah, that was that whole class. Everyone was strange. And we were like, maybe we're not that weird same and I don't know if it's because we like both were majors in like the media department and I don't know if that just attracts like you know these just freaks of nature but it just seems like everyone we had classes with were always just like the most oddballs I've ever met ever I was always in shock so I guess college was like a good time for that reason like we got so many stories out of it now we can make a podcast yeah I mean so many like Julian, just (laughs) for example, um, our professor, I don't even know where to start with him. Like I I can't, I can't even think of one word to describe him because he was all over the place all the time. Number one, he thinks he's famous. He's He's like convinced he's famous. (laughs) He's kind of, and it's, it's like weird because it's like in one, like one side of us, I feel like always had this like respect for him because he is so successful at like what he does and has worked for some really great publications but then the other side of us is like okay but how do we like get to that point like how do we learn from you and it just became like a joke because like especially considering his name and him being this like person thinking he was like famous like he's like god almost it was really easy to like be like king julian you know and like start making jokes based off of just his name yeah it was supposed to be a news writing class but it was really just king julian class every assignment we were studying things that he had done and writing about them we had to watch that presentation that he did at some other college and like write an article about it like why are we covering you like there's so many important issues going on especially in denver in King Julian's like, no, we're going to talk about me. Yeah, it was just like, I don't know. I just, I think that was probably our funniest nickname for him because of like Madagascar. Like, I think he expected all of us to just like behave like Mort and just be like so about him all the time. And I mean, like, it, it, it was. We kind of are. We kind of, we became that. <laughs> it we turned became- into that. <laughs> Because then, like, do you want to tell about, like, you know, what what we found out about him through being, like, crazy stalker, like, Gen Z girls? Oh, yeah. We found his website, his Instagram, his Twitter. His Twitter! <laughs> his Twitter was the best. His Twitter, where we went back to the first tweet he ever quote, <laughs> and <laughs> he said something that was, like, um oh my god what was it it was like clouds kissing (laughs) hashtag (laughs) denver hashtag clouds hashtag kissing (laughs) it was like just watch two clouds kiss he just sees love in everything i think because even when we were in his class he would like read articles that he had written for and they were always like subtly romantic not even subtly there was the one with the the baseball player he was interviewing in like a denny's and number one whoever schedules an interview in a denny's yeah but the whole time he's like his his big blue orbs glistened in the denny's light (laughs) and if you're like just being a descriptive journalist you can say that you know maybe his hands were really strong or something related to him playing the sport he plays yeah yeah instead it was just like 
he smelled so good. <laughs> like, I felt like I was reading smut when I was like reading that story. I was like, oh my God, which I guess like works, you know, because like I was invested. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? Yeah. Like the whole thing was fan fiction. It was. It felt like that at least. I was like, Wattpod who? You know, like <laughs> all I need is King Juju, his storytelling. But And then even we had to... um go to a homeless shelter to write an article for that class. And I thought that was really cool. Like it was a great experience to be able to go and see what they do there. Juju wanted us to go because his girlfriend works there. And we didn't know that. Like we had no idea. When I was emailing her asking for like a meeting with, I don't remember who it was, but like their director of marketing or something. And I'm like, hi, like, my name's Lila. I'm in King Julian's class. Like, just wondering if I could have a meeting. And she must have been like, daddy? Oh, my God, you're in daddy's class? No, literally. I know him. It's the fact that, like, also leading up to that point, he would, like, subtly mention his girlfriend, like, during class. He'd be like, well, my girlfriend and my girlfriend. Like, just, he would just sneak that in there. And we had conversations about how we were, like, I don't think this man has a girlfriend. Like, we thought he was making it up because just, like, he was acting like, I don't know, like, his he was, like, in high school, and it was, like, the first girl he ever talked to. Like, he was all, like, tee like, my girlfriend. I was going to say the same thing. It was, like, a crush. Like, yeah. yeah, my girlfriend. My girlfriend and I did this. Even when he asked where we're all from, I was like, oh, well, I just moved here from New York. And he was like, oh, my girlfriend's sister went to college there. I'm like, that is such a stretch to bring your girlfriend into the conversation. Your girlfriend's sister went to college, just generally in that state, not even to my college. And he he had to work it in. Yeah, it was like any any opportunity that he had that he could mention his girlfriend, he would like he would just insert that into whatever conversation he possibly could. And that's why we thought it was like fake, because we were like who talks about their girlfriend this much that being said like I think you entered a relationship quite a bit ago and I just recently entered one and I I'd be doing the same thing so (laughs) you know maybe maybe I learned from King Juju how to be a hopeless romantic by the clouds kissing but like it's (laughs) like it worked maybe I'm like a great writer now maybe I'll interview like some dude at a Denny's and talk about like his big, beautiful green eyes and like luscious lips or something. His and- bulging muscles and <laughs> his handsome face. He called all of them handsome yeah. all the time. It was always, that was some of his description. And I actually- that doesn't even tell you anything about someone. Like handsome is so subjective. It is. It's just saying I found him attractive. Yeah. And he was like throwing it in all over the place. He's like, oh, he's so handsome. <laughs> Like, I couldn't believe... I actually took another class with him in my last quarter. Like a um, true little mort. A true little mort, because I loved him. He, I also was offended, because he never followed back my Instagram, you know? And he followed yours back. That is what I have on you. Yeah. Yeah. Because we found everything he had. I don't even remember why I followed him. I think I just wanted to see if he'd follow back. Like, that was it. Yeah, I think it and was... And then like- he... We oh no 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 like, let's try that because we both followed him he didn't follow us back and then I think I unfollowed and refollowed him like months later and then he followed me back yeah and then I tried the same thing and he still never followed <laughs> me back and I took multiple classes with this man he actually I, I asked him to write a letter of recommendation for me and he seems like he likes me but maybe I don't know you just he doesn't like me enough you know I just can't compare to you know his girlfriend from the <laughs> from the homeless shelter <laughs> that sounds so bad she just worked there no <laughs> I don't know she just if we want to keep that part but <laughs> no um but like in that class I took from him it was like I, I got to read like a few more things that he wrote other than I guess what we discussed in class and it was so interesting to like be in that class with him like without you because I felt the need to like text you about like everything that was being said um 
and those descriptions they they carried on they carried on and he would always talk about descriptions like with me because that's something like I needed to work on so whenever I would write something he'd always say like I needed to be better about describing people but then he would always say like show and don't tell so it's like I would try to like write stuff that was you know not blatantly calling someone handsome so (laughs) even though that's what he does you should have just copied what he does been like he was so handsome and gorgeous and I was falling in love (laughs) Juju would have been like great writing great so good snaps all around he would have actually loved that but all in all at least at least in Julian's class we had I don't know what we should call him BJ (laughs) yeah (laughs) we had BJ so I think he was in class the first day he was because I remember um we got to be like separated off into like uh or no, we introduced ourselves to the class and he mentioned he was from Chicago. And as someone who's also from Illinois and like all my family lives up in Chicago, I was like, oh my God, cute guy from Chicago. That's my in, you know? And I remember- Yeah, you were immediately like, oh my God, my family lives up there. If we get married, like your family and my family- We could like hang out. out. Yeah, so exactly. I was like, all right, BJ, like time to, you know- alpha female my way into this it didn't really work out but like I did talk to him in the first class like I remember like leaving class we kind of like walked together and we were chatting about like Illinois things you know like uh but then he just he never came back and I remember like being excited like wanting him to come back thinking like something could develop but the thing is I don't think BJ has ever developed past college (laughs) <laughs> BJ came to class over Zoom every single day for the rest of the quarter and Julian had a TV at the front of the room massive and TV too massive TV BJ is like the only one on Zoom ever so it's just his face b- bigger than Julian <laughs> BJ's face at the front of the class like Julian would be talking giving a lecture and we're just all looking at BJ and it was hard not to. I mean, he was he was gorgeous. Which is why we had to figure out every single thing about his life as soon yeah. as the class was over. And we found he okay, he is like not on social media. That was, was the hardest it was part. Tough. We really did some research. And I he also, without saying his real name, I will say that BJ's name stood for something and we didn't even know like what his full name was we knew his first name and we found his last name based off of like looking through our like class list um but he it was like a difficult task like we went really above and beyond to try to find this man on social media and he was just like not on like instagram which i feel like is probably like for us and like our generation, the most popular Instagram. Maybe not for him. He's and not his. in our generation. Yeah, maybe not for him and his. <laughs> so yeah, we found his Facebook eventually, which hasn't been updated since like 2016-ish. His profile picture was him when he was like 13. Yeah. And we were like, jackpot. Go through the whole thing. Pictures of his driver's license. Like we could have stolen this man's identity. <laughs> we and <could've>. then <laughs> the picture of his first year at DU which I think was in 2016 I think you're right or maybe like 2015 somewhere in there but point of the matter is he was so old like it's 2022 when we're doing this he is a super 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 senior he was so old to have been at DU we found frat pictures and his frat has since been disbanded like he his frat doesn't even exist anymore so we're like okay didn't know that like bj's been at this school since it was founded like (laughs) he i remember he was older than my brother and i was like a senior my brother's three years older than me like 
he had he's like closer to 30 than 20 at this point yeah he's got to be like 28 years old now which I just couldn't believe like I was like he's probably a junior senior somewhere around there and then we find out like we're living in twilight and he's Edward and has been here like he created the school he's the founder that's why he never shows up to class he's like I've been doing this for eight years yeah and so the funniest part I think about the whole BJ experience um (laughs) the BJ experience (laughs) is when like flash forward I guess maybe six months later it was around Christmas time of last year. Yeah, we played the long game. We played the long game. I was getting out of like this like situationship and I got on Tinder because I was like, you know, what else do you do? I just wanted to like see what else is out there. And I'm swiping and I see him and I know it. I, I saw I didn't even see him in Colorado. I saw him in Illinois while I was home for Christmas. And I was like, ain't no way but it had in his like bio like university of denver and i was like who else looks exactly like him i know he's from here and goes to school there it's got to be it's got to be him so i like immediately screenshot it send it over lila's way and did it have his full name or did it say bj it said bj okay so So you knew yeah, I knew it had to be him. And I didn't I know was, if it said like like Barl or something. And you were like, <laughs> <Barl>. is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it said CJ, and I remember he was probably like eighty four as his age or whatever. I swiped yeah. and we match, and I was like, no way. And I was like, I don't know if he'll remember me because it's like obviously, you know, we we got to watch him like he was like a Netflix original series like every day in class. But, like, he didn't know us on that same level. I was always excited for that. It was like, yeah, BJ comes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. (laughs) Literally, it was, like, the only thing I could look forward to. So I remember being like, I don't think he'll remember me. And I also, there's no way that he would even suspect, like, even if he does remember me, that, like, I would know all of the information I know about him. Like, I know this man's an Aquarius. Like, I know everything about this man. We, like... We know his like middle school girlfriend. Yeah. Like I said, his literal driver's license that he posted on Facebook when he got it. We were like, oh, cutie. Like, so I was like, there's just, I just need to like play it safe and not like be like, oh my God, like I love your driver's license photo. You know, like I I, (laughs) I couldn't like come across like that. So I remember just being like, oh, like, do you remember like Juju's class? Like, I'm pretty sure we had it together. Like knowing like damn well that we we did. And he responds back and he's like, ha ha, like, yeah. And I remember like wh- when we had class together, he had mentioned something along the lines of like, this is one of the last classes he needed to graduate. So we talked about Juju a little bit. And I feel like, Juju just being Juju was a universal experience because he also had similar like opinions to Juju as we had. So I found that interesting and I was like, oh, okay, like there, we're kind of, you know, there's some banter going on here. Like, oh my God, we have so much in common. Maybe we a little both love connection. King Julian. We both love King Julian. We're both from like outside Chicago. You're hot, I'm hot, you know, like <laughs> when are we getting married? So then I like, remember um I it it ended because I just I asked him the one question he could not answer and that was when do you graduate and he he, he was like replied. she knows too much he never replied so I never heard from him again I was sad at the time you know like that was you know I let a good one get away <laughs> I, I literally don't. You were so far in your relationship with him and he just disappeared. Completely one-sided. He could not even, I bet you he does not even know my last name. But we. I think he was just afraid of falling in love with you. Probably. And he was like, I have to get out now. Um, Caitlin, can I ask why you have a watercolor of Einstein behind you? Uh, my brother painted that. Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I thought it was some, like, weird Einstein fan art for a second. And I was like, why is this? Yeah, I just love Einstein equals MC squared, baby. No. Yeah. Um, Your celebrity crush is Einstein. 
Yeah, actually, that's that's how I think CJ is going to look when he gets older. So, <laughs> so I just keep it on my wall. When he's older, he's already old. Like no, CJ, CJ was like best friends with Einstein. Actually, they founded DQ <laughs> together. No, um, he, my brother's a really good artist, and he actually painted that. So yeah, my parents have it. Yeah, that's a way better story than I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So oh my god, I forgot about I don't I don't even remember his actual name, but like the Easter Island emoji. <laughs> Easter Island emoji. I remember his name. I remember his that, name because it was the same name as like everybody else who like we knew during that quarter. And we kept we were talking about all these different men that they all had the same name. So we'd always have to be like which one. So I think that was another reason why we started using the emojis because it helped to oh. them. But it was a J name. Yeah. Do you do? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was. Okay. Because I remember this was like the very beginning of the quarter and I started one of my classes and I saw this guy and I was like, I texted Caitlin. I texted her and I was like, there's a cute guy in this class. I find his Instagram later. I send her his profile picture because he's private. And she's like, oh my God, he's ugly. Like, what are you talking about? And then you start one of your classes like the day after and you're like oh my god there's this cute guy in this class <laughs> and it's the same guy <laughs> I just sent you a picture of and you called <laughs> ugly <laughs> he was just really not photogenic like in all of his photos it looked like he had like 0.5 mode on at all times like his <laughs> face was so like long looking in his photos like and I'm pretty sure because you ran a school account I don't know if you want to say what account it was. Yeah, I ran the University of Denver student government page. I was like their social media. I was the executive chair of social media. And I 100% used that to my advantage. Anytime somebody was private that like we wanted to know what was up, I just follow them from that. Because I'm like, they're not going to know it's me. Nobody's keeping track of the USG social media manager. And also, even if they were, it's like the perfect way to, to like have your in because they would be like, oh, they're they wouldn't think that it's because like we're psychotic. They would think it's because like you're in USG and like you're just trying to follow people that, you know, go to school there. You know, well, I would agree. OK, I think I was usually pretty slick with it. But after I started film, I wanted to follow. Um, I don't know how to say his name. Kevin. I don't know if you're going to remember who I'm talking. Huh? Kevin. Kevin. I don't know if you know who I'm talking about, though, right now. Oh. Like, I, I don't know I, if you remember. I, if if you start mentioning it, I'll probably remember, but I thought you were going to talk about Kev Kev. Baby Kev Kev. Kev Kev. Oh, my God. That's so good. Um, <laughs> These are also such obvious names. It's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> if any of them listen to this, they're going to know exactly, like, <laughs> who we're talking about. Yeah, we're just... We're just gossiping, but okay. No, we need to get to Kev Kev. I love baby Kev Kev is like one of my favorite people that ever went to our school. Same. Like, so, cause I first met Kevin cause I was taking a social media class and we were put in a team together with Rack. So it's me, Rack. <laughs> and Kevin. Rack. <laughs> And um, we had to make a social media campaign that was against drink spiking. And of course, I enlisted the best actor, the hottest actor I've ever met, Caitlin. Yes. And then Johansson lookalike right here. Yeah. (laughs) And then you brought one of your friends and Rack brought one of his friends. And also love Rack. Rack is amazing. Love Rack. Rack is amazing. Rack is so great. but. Kevin like lives in Kevin land all the time. (laughs) Kevin has never been to the real world. Like he's just, he's oblivious. He never really did much at all for the project. Like the professor called him out, but I didn't even care. Cause I was like, it's Kevin. Kevin tries his best. He's just such a nice guy too, that it's hard to like be upset with him for it because you know, it's not, you know, it's not from a place of laziness. It's just like purely stupidity. Like he's just, 
I think my favorite Kevin moment was when we were actually filming the campaign that you did at Rack's house. Rack's house was also disgusting. Like, I feel like we need to add that in. I can't even believe people live there. There was like a yeah. beer trash can that was just like, like you could see the fumes coming off of it. You and I think he called walk. it like the juice or something. Yeah, he did. He <laughs> did. And you couldn't walk. Like your feet would get stuck to the ground <laughs> because there was so much beer just that had been spilled all over these wood floors in this house. And we're filming a scene where you guys are supposed to pass out, but the floors are so disgusting. I remember I'm the like, couch was like broken too. So <laughs> we were like, ah, where are we supposed to go? Yeah, I'm like, don't lay on the floor. Like it's it's icky, it's sticky. I don't know what's on it, beer, cum, whatever. <laughs> and then you were like, okay, go lay down on the couch. <laughs> the couch is like broken, literally sinks in when you sit on it. Like the wood foundation is busted. Like I'm like, how do you live here? The floor, like the couch is so <laughs> bad. Yeah, it was, that was such an experience. And I remember also like, I already previously had known Kevin because Kevin was a baller. And I did dance team in college and like, I, I wasn't sure because like dance team, you know, like I think some people think we're cool and respect us, but for the most part, like we're not, we're not cool or respected. And I kind of like, I expect that it's been how it's been my whole life growing up as a dancer. People just don't care about it, you know, whatever. That's cool with me. But I just like always was under the impression that like nobody knew my face or like recognized me as like someone who was on dance team. But as soon as like you were put in this project with him and then we had to go over and like film, he said something to you about like, oh, I didn't know your friends were on dance team. Well, this was actually after we filmed, you and Chloe saw him at I think one of the games because you were dancing and he was playing, right? Yeah. And didn't you guys wave to him and he like didn't say hi? Something like that. Like, and then he texted you. Well, because, yeah, I think you were like, I think he didn't see us or something. And I was like, yeah, yeah, probably not. And I was like, yeah, sure. It was just an accident. He didn't see you guys. So he didn't say hi, whatever. And then the next time I'm in class with him, he's like, <laughs> I didn't know your friends were on the dance team. <laughs> I just <laughs> saw them at the game. And I was like, you motherfucker, like, why did you say hi? Yeah, because I we just thought because he's such a nice guy. Like, I, I didn't think he was ignoring me. But then it was after that, we would see him on campus 24 seven on his scooter. He was always on a scooter. He was never not on a scooter. Always. And every time he would see me, he would like do that upward head nod thing, you know, that guys do. And like <laughs> smile at me. And like, I would just be like, oh, like, hey, kid, kid. <laughs> like I don't know he just he had a nice smile and so like although one time uh my group was meeting um in class to like work on this project and Kevin wasn't there and Rack like gets up real close to me and he's like hey Kevy Kev isn't coming today and I'm like oh like why why is he not coming he was, <laughs> and Rack is like this guy on his team just killed someone last night. Oh my God. <laughs> and like, as much as that is not like, that was horrible. That was a horrible thing to happen. I, I just couldn't help but laugh. Cause I was like, what the actual hell is going on right now? Like I just show up to class. I think I'm going to have this nice project work session with Kev, Kevin rack and racks. Like, <laughs> no, somebody got murdered last night. Kevin's not coming. That was actually like, insane. Cause I will say this too. Um, being on the dance team, like some of the girls that were on the team were like friends with like some of the athletes in some capacity. I had like hung out with like the guy who drove drunk and like killed someone. And weirdest part about that whole situation is, I think I can say this, we might get like a cease and desist letter, but like... <laughs> <laughs> the guy like uh the guy who did that has an older brother who plays professional and the older brother actually like hit me up on Instagram so this is like after that all happened so like I had like this pro NBA player like in my DMs and I don't I forgot about that 
yeah and I don't know if he like knew that I knew his brother or like what happened in his family but it was so odd to me how quiet everyone was about the whole situation like our school never released a statement on it like it was very much like brushed under the rug like they never said a thing about it and like this kid is like fully like going to jail like he killed yeah. somebody so yeah it was just such a strange odd thing and I, it was also weird to like be like hit up by his brother like after that because it was like I don't know he obviously would would have known that I went to school with his younger brother like I have it like in my bio and like stuff like that and like how it is weird maybe he thought his younger brother was like competition and he was like now that he's out of the way I don't know (laughs) I didn't really know either of the guys super well or anything but it was just like that I was like I don't know. I was like, of all the things that's going on in your life right now, you know, you're going off to the NBA championship in a few months. He they would they went on to like win. Like he he's a pro baller. His brother just killed someone, and this is what he's doing with his time. He's like DMing me on Instagram and then like snapping me from like this like secret profile he had. And Priorities, pre- I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I still have him on Snap. I don't honestly remember because I might have removed him because it was like obvious he like wanted one thing. And I'm yeah. just not about that, you know, and I was like, you know, I don't really care if you're like a pro baller. I'm just not about that. But it is kind of a, like a flex, you know, to be able to say that. But I, the whole yeah. time that I talked to him, I kept thinking about like, your brother literally just killed someone. And like, this is what you're doing with your time. You know, you're like hitting up girls he goes to school with. Isn't that odd? Like that's that's horrible. Like that's actually horrible. I feel like crazy shit just happens all the time on campus in college. I mean, even like going back to the the social media campaign we did on drink spiking. The final project like even that was I think we ended up having too much fun filming. Because we ended up filming one of the TikToks where Chloe actually roofies the rest of the girls. Oh, yeah. And then it looks like you guys all die. <laughs> and it wasn't supposed to. It was just like we had a limited amount of actors. We wanted to show that it could be somebody you know, like somebody you know could be a threat, play it safe, that type of thing. But instead, it just looked like one of your friends... <laughs> spontaneously decided to turn on the friend group and roofie all of you <laughs> That's so i show that. that happens to me like every tuesday well yeah because you do it to me <laughs> yeah and vice versa baby you <laughs> um but so like i sh- we show that in class and kevin shows up like once a month so i don't think he was there while we were showing this but um <laughs> the whole class was like what the hell did you make <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> this girl just kill all of her friends <laughs> it's supposed to be like an awareness campaign and one of them just like turns dark and <laughs> poisons everyone and I was like no 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 like that's not how it's supposed to be and then we had we had Rack record a voiceover for like more clarity make it more engaging I thought his voiceover was pretty good I was like good job Rack like props to you I play it in class and this time Rack's not there I play it in class. Everybody starts laughing. This is a <laughs> an awareness campaign it's a good thing about sexual wasn't. assault <laughs> and drink spiking. And everybody is like, this is so bad because ah. of Rack's voice. And even my professor, she was straight up like, did, did Rack do that? And I was like, yes, Rack did that. And she goes, I think you should get rid of it. <laughs> I was like, God damn. And the, the best part was because it's like he has a pretty like deep, you know, like manly voice. And it's like I think that added to it. Like if I think if it was your voice and it's like softer and feminine, it would like come across better. But it was like, especially considering that it showed like Chloe was the one to like mur- murder us <laughs> all. And then it's like this man's voice. Like, I think that was probably off putting. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big complaint like on our side it was a lack of resources we had a small team for this I was like I don't think I should be acting directing editing filming like all of it so I was just focusing on my jobs and I was like rack can do the voiceover but the way it came off to them was if <laughs> 
if you're a girl and you're going out for a girl's night with all your friends, one of your girlfriends might roofie you (laughs) and kill you and all your friends. And then this man is going to voice over your death and talk about how, how you should have saved yourself. Yeah. So it's like came mansplaining off. it to you. <laughs> yeah, mansplaining <laughs> female on female poison. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so that came off really bad. We got, we got rid of it. None of us thought of it that way until it was shown to the class. And then I was like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. So we get rid of Rack's voice, but I was about to interview for a job at the time at this really big talent agency and Rack's sister works there. So he gave me his sister's number to talk to her. I hadn't had a chance to talk to Rack about the way his voiceover went, but I thought it was so funny. I was like, I have to tell someone. So I call his sister to talk to her about this interview. And I started telling her (laughs) about the class, laughing at Rack's voice in the campaign. And I'm like, wow, he's probably going to hate me after this for just like going straight to his literal biological family and telling them like the about how humiliating this life. was. Yeah. He wasn't even there. Like He wasn't himself. even there. I was like, you know, his sister can tell him like, that's good enough. I'd also never talked to her before. And I just started the conversation with like, this humiliating thing just happened to your brother. I'm sure she loved that, though. Speaking of the <laughs> professor you had for that class, I also had. Oh. And I think we just need to get into that. Oh my God. What was her name? Uh, Poma. Huh? Coma. Coma. <laughs> yeah, Coma. I love Dr. Coma. <laughs> <laughs> so, this professor we both mutually had. I had her for film crit and you had her, what was your class called? Producing social media or producing video for social media. Okay. So yeah, we, and it was the same quarter that we both had her. Yeah. So we were seeing her like alternating days, but never together. Yeah. She was just honestly kind of a trip. I mean, I think she liked me because I was in film crit with her and I'm kind of like a movie buff. Like a lot of the movies that she showed or like, talked about like I had already known so like right away I feel like I kind of like had my in with her but the the thing that I really had a an issue with when it came to coma was the best way I can describe her is like a 2000s like Disney Channel mom like that's how she would dress there's like scarves and sweaters and cardigans and shirts and leggings and like knee-high socks and boots (laughs) They're all a different color. They're all neon. (laughs) Exactly. And like, we would just like text each other, like, because I believe we might have had a class on the same day sometimes, because I think like I had class like two to three times a week and you had it two to three times a week. So I think there was like maybe like one day we overlapped. So I I think she would go like straight from your class to my class. Yeah. Because she would talk about your class sometimes. And I would be like, do you know Caitlin? And she'd be like, yeah. And then that's one of the reasons I brought you in to do the campaign for her class was because she already knew you. So it was like a celebrity to her. She was like, oh, my God, you got Caitlin. (laughs) I do remember she did say something to me about it. Like the next time I had class with her, she was like asking me about that and was like, oh, like you're friends with Lila. And I was like, kind of like, duh, you know, like we have like our text chain is like talking about like how like absurd your outfits are on like a daily basis like coma is okay she's a great person i love her to death her teaching is chaotic to say the least in my class she would always like forget things or like tell us to do an assignment one way and then tell us to do it a different way five seconds later so half the class was people asking questions to like understand what she just said so Often, I was not engaged at all. I would just sit there, and I sat directly in front of her. It wasn't like an auditorium-style class. It was a square of tables. She sat at the front. I sat at, like, the first chair on the first table. I could have, like, touched her with my toes if I wanted to. And I would be texting you (laughs) about her (laughs) the whole time. Like, I'm sitting in front of her in class, straight up, phone out, and I'm like, Rome was wearing a neon green scarf today. It was always what the is she greens. Thinking? It was like the putrid greens that she really liked. And she would always wear the same like 
black. Do you remember her little black booties she would wear? She loved those things. She loved those things. I she probably had them since like 2009. They just like, you know, they last and she knows they're comfortable. So she just keeps reaching for them. But like, I, like they looked awful. Like I, they looked so worn out. Like they were kind of grayish, but you could tell they weren't meant to be gray. They yeah. were just like that worn. They were like leather, but the leather. Sometimes she would get really close to like having a good outfit. And then she put on like striped socks or something. And yeah. it's like, coma, you were almost there. Oh my God, coma. Coma. <laughs> Oh, you're almost there. there. Her, she also. I remember. Do you remember the purple outfit day? Yes, there was a lot of purple too, though. Generally, like I know she dressed in like full purple, but yeah, there was one day where she, like, I kind of thought it was a sleigh. Like, I kind of thought she she came through with that one. It's kind of camp. Yeah, it's kind of camp. It's kind of serving. And I remember she came in with that, and I was like. Coma's outfit is like not that bad today. Like I remember texting you and I was like, it's it's not that bad. I don't know if it was just like maybe my taste was just each time I saw her getting worse and worse. So like the fact that it wasn't like a putrid, like puke diarrhea <laughs> cream on her body, like anything is better than that, you know? So and I think like you texted me later and you're like, Are you kidding? And then you're like, wait, I can kind of see it. Like this is why I couldn't be a professor. Like knowing that there's people like us that are grading your outfit <laughs> every day you come into work. Ruthlessly like that's kind of horrifying. Ruthlessly judging you for it too. Like that's kind of, yeah, kind of horrifying, kind of a lot. But so I took this media law class and the class was really... um <laughs> There wasn't a lot of discussion within the class. So it was hard to like meet people or like make friends within that class. And, you know, as like a single girl in college who like wants to be okay single, but like desperately wants to like be married, um, you just naturally pick and choose like two guys per class that are cute. And you talk about them with your friends. It was just so fun. It was so fun to like just obsess over them. I mean, I had that a bit with ron from geography my geography class yeah and he asked me to get dinner with him so he picks me up from the show he takes me to this restaurant called chiba hut which is like a sub restaurant in denver everything is weed themed like every single name is themed off being a stoner they have like a mural of a parrot smoking a joint on the wall all the drinks everything is themed that way and I was like I'd never been there before so we get our food we sit down and I'm like oh this place is crazy I didn't know it was gonna be like this like stoner restaurant and he goes what do you mean I was like what do you what do you mean what do I mean (laughs) like what do you I am looking at a huge painting of a parrot smoking a joint with just weed leaves all over the wall. What do you mean? And he goes, oh, I never noticed. How did you not like, notice that? What? And um, the best part is he said that he takes everyone he knows to this restaurant. Like he goes all the time and he never noticed. We come back to campus and like it's cold. And he's like, hey, do you want a hoodie so you can walk back? And I was like, yeah, that's so nice of you. I'll take a hoodie. We walk up to his room, which is disgusting, by the way. He's living out of his suitcase. We're like almost done with the quarter. This man is living out of his suitcase. I'm like, do you even live here? Like, are you squatting at DU and like going <laughs> just like walking into classes? Like what's happening right now? He has a pyramid of cups from the dining hall that he's stolen. That's the only decoration is stolen cups. And he's like, Do you yeah, remember? sorry about that. And I'm like, what What the hell is this? And he's like, oh, yeah, I steal them from the dining hall and I give them to the Goodwill. And I was like, I don't know if I believe that because there's a lot of cups in here, but that's a good excuse and I'll take it, whatever. And then like a week after that is when he sends me another picture of his cup tower. And there's a note in the picture and it was from his mommy. And it was like, love you, Ronnie, from mommy. <laughs> 
Like this man had no decor, nothing in his room besides stolen cups, a suitcase he's living out of, and a note for mommy. That's all you need, really. Like I respect that lifestyle. True. He loves his mommy. Kind of like Robin Hood, you know. If he's telling the truth, he's stealing from the rich. Because let's be real, you kind of have to be well off to go to DU if you don't have scholarships. Giving to the poor, donating to Goodwill. He's definitely rich too, but like. I don't think he ever gave those cups to Goodwill because when he sent me a picture of that stack, it was bigger than before. This is his like my strange addiction is like stealing <laughs> cups from the dining hall and then making the tallest pyramid he can. And I think he thinks that's like game. Like he's going to send it to girls and they're going to be like, oh my God, Ron, that's so hot. I love your cup tower. I love your cup tower. Do you want to make out? Like the weirdest thing to me though was like the last quarter I took that class with him. And he, randomly, he was like, I'm going to Peru tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, cool. And he's like, I don't have my passport. I don't know where my passport is. And I'm like, if you're going out of the country, I'm not. I'm no genius. But I think one of the first things you should have is a passport. Yeah. And I think you should know where it is if you're leaving tomorrow. And then he like reaches down into his backpack. Like, I'm assuming he's getting a pencil or a notebook or something college like. And he's like oh, there's my passport, and pulls it out of his backpack. That feels like the stupidest excuse to try to have a conversation with you probably ever. And how is that even, like, that's not even a conversation. Like, I had nothing to say in that situation. I was like, okay, cool, you're going to Peru. Oh, oh, you don't have your passport? That sucks. Oh, you've had it on you the whole time. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He was so weird. Well, thank you guys for listening for probably like the two people that are, which is like us and maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, Caitlin, for listening to this podcast. Thanks, Lila. And I'll, I'll say a thank you to John and Tristan right here, right now, because I think they're the only people who are going to. Yeah. <laughs> Our huge fan base. Thank you all. Massive, bro. Yeah, shout out to our biggest fan, Johnny Cakes. <laughs> Johnny Cakes. <laughs> Johnny Cakes and Tristy Poo. Yeah. <laughs> Tristy Poo, Boo Boo Bear. <laughs> <laughs>